Mental health advocates in Nova Scotia are calling it a crisis. This school year alone, three junior high school students in Cape Breton have ended their own lives, with the latest a 13-year-old girl happening just this past weekend. She was a victim of cyberbullying, and as Angela McIver reports, the province has no way to legally combat online attackers. Madison Wilson was only 13 years old when she took her own life on Father's Day. She loved everything, loved her music, always on her phone. Amy Lynn Wilson says her daughter was being cyberbullied by classmates at Sydney Mines Junior High School. And even though they talked about it, Wilson never knew the extent of her daughter's suffering until it was too late. I always try to tell her it's what you think of yourself, it's not what other people think. Madison Wilson is the third junior high student in Cape Breton to die by suicide this school year. But as students seek mental health support, the options continue to shrink. The school board recently cut guidance counselor positions, and the wait time to see a child psychologist is at least a year. The province's newly appointed education minister says it's time to intervene. We're of course committed to doing whatever we can to, to make sure the supports that, that are there, um, that people know about them and can access them, and of course always open to, to enhancing these services. Nova Scotia already tried once and failed to combat cyberbullying. It was in direct response to the death of Retea Parsons in 2013. The 17-year-old attempted suicide and later died from her injuries. The Cyber Safety Act was meant to punish people who make threats online. And for two years, a team of investigators followed up on complaints by issuing warnings and court orders. Then in 2015, the Supreme Court of Nova Scotia deemed the law unconstitutional. The province hasn't even tabled a replacement. Madison Wilson's mother says people young and old need to be held accountable. A comment, a remark. A post. They don't realize what they're doing and some people need to face what, what they're doing. Her advice to parents? Always demand a password, even if your child refuses. She said it could have saved her daughter's life. Angela McIver, CBC News, Halifax.